Ray Harryhausen was the maestro of monsters. We came for the skeletal warriors, but we stayed for the storytelling. The children of the night! In my case, I stayed for a lifetime. My name is Natalie Haynes, and I write and talk about Greek myth for a living. Ray Harryhausen was where it all began for me, though I had no idea, watching the films as a child, that he was creating his vision of these myths from often quite obscure ancient Greek sources. His version of Medusa in Clash of the Titans is so compelling that it remains the image I think most people still have of her, a flashing-eyed monster picking off her prey with a bow and arrow before finishing them off with her petrifying gaze. Early vase paintings and sculptures from ancient Greece often show Medusa with a wide mouth, huge tusks and a bulbous lolling tongue. She also usually has wings. Harryhausen makes cinematic decisions to ditch these features and give her eyes that flash, a serpentine tail, and blood which corrodes metal on contact. The snakish tail works far better to convey monstrosity in the cave where Perseus discovers her than wings would have done. Her skill as an archer seems to level things up between her and the Greeks who have come to kill her. Again, this is a cinematic addition to Medusa, and it ratchets up the tension of the scene beautifully. The true classics nerd might see it as a nod to Artemis, a goddess who's often depicted with bow and arrows and with whom Medusa is linked. She was sculpted onto the pediment of the Temple of Artemis on Corsaira, modern-day Corfu. There's no doubt that Harryhausen's vision has prevailed. Even Lego Medusa resembles his creation more closely than any other. And then there's the woman who captures Jason's attention in a rather different way in Jason and the Argonauts. Nancy Kovac shares top billing with Todd Armstrong in the opening credits of the movie. Medea is not a minor character in this film. What she is, though, is a great deal less alarming than her ancient counterpart. The film draws closely on Apollonius of Rhodes' epic poem, The Argonautica. In this version of the quest for the Golden Fleece, it is Medea who takes on and destroys the bronze giant, Talos. The Argonauts never make it onto the Isle of Bronze because Talos pelts them with rocks when they sail close. Medea tells the Argonauts not to worry, and she channels the power she has from the witch goddess Hecate. Hecate, queen of darkness, you've always helped me. Tell me now what I must do. Talos has the weak spot on his ankle, which we might recognize from the movie, his Achilles heel, if you will, in Apollonius' account. But Medea casts a spell on him, and he picks up one of the rocks he's about to hurl at the Argo and smashes it into his weak ankle, causing his own death. This young woman may be a princess in love with a handsome adventurer, but in this battle, she is easily the most powerful warrior on the ship. For Apollonius, Medea is the one who slays the Aupnos, unsleeping dragon that guards the Golden Fleece, and she is responsible for Jason surviving the terrifying warriors that spring from the ground when Aetes sows the serpent's teeth. In Apollonius' version, Jason will have just ploughed this land with the aid of fire-breathing bronze bulls or oxen. I'm always a little sorry we didn't see Harryhausen's version of them. The skeletal form of these warriors is all Harryhausen's spectacular idea. For the Greeks, they were earthborn, chthonic, and perhaps ginormous, perhaps not. Either way, they're stopped because Medea has told Jason that he must throw a rock into their midst. They will then turn on one another and fight themselves rather than him. It's Agoria and perhaps more narratively exciting idea than having them all jump off a cliff, as happens in the movie. These two films were my first encounters with Greek myth, and I couldn't have had a better guide than Ray Harryhausen. Hey!